Hello. In this video, we will consider some of the techniques available for managing interest rate risk, including matching and smoothing, asset and liability management, forward rate agreements, also known as FRAs, and derivatives. Derivatives, the use of futures and options to help manage interest rate risk, is a discursive topic only. No numbers will be set on this in the exam. Firstly, let's consider matching. Suppose I'm a bank and a customer has come to see me to ask about a mortgage on a property. If that customer would like a variable rate mortgage, in other words, the interest rate will go up and down in line with market rates, the bank's income will vary depending on what the prevailing rate is. It might be sensible for the bank to finance this mortgage by taking out a variable rate loan itself. If the bank were to do this, then as interest rates rise in the market, then as income from our customer rises because we charge them more, our own finance charges will rise similarly. This means the bank's profit, the difference between income and expenses, will stay approximately the same. For example, suppose the bank agrees the mortgage with their customer and the variable rate of interest at that point is 5% per annum and the bank manages to finance that mortgage by obtaining a loan from elsewhere at a variable rate of 3% per annum. The initial profit of the bank will be 5 less 3 is 2%. If, let's say, interest rates on the market rose by 1%, then this would mean the income from the customer would increase from 5 to 6%, and the interest we have to pay to finance that customer would increase from 3 to 4%. The bank's income is still 6 minus 4, or 2%. This protects the bank's exposure to increases and decreases in interest rates. If the customer had originally asked for a fixed rate mortgage, the bank could then finance this with a fixed rate loan, so that the bank's income and outgoings would stay the same no matter what happens to interest rates. In other words, the bank is matching variable rate assets with variable rate liabilities and matching fixed rate assets with fixed rate liabilities. Next, let's consider smoothing. If a company uses nothing but variable rate loans, then the interest that it pays will rise and fall in line with what happens with variable rate interest rates. This makes interest rate costs relatively volatile. An alternative would be to use all fixed rate loans, which eliminates the volatility, but there's no benefit to the company from a drop in market rates. The company may decide to use a mixture of both fixed and variable rate loans. Suppose it uses 50% fixed and 50% variable. Interest payments still vary with changes to the variable rate, but it's smoothed by having a proportion of the debt as fixed rate. The company can decide what proportion it would like. The more heavily weighted it is towards fixed rate finance, the flatter this line will become. Assets and liability management considers the nature of projects and the cash flows associated with them and seeks to match the nature of those cash flows with the nature of the finance. For example, if a project is likely to generate very stable cash flows, it makes sense to match this with stable outgoings. In other words, finance it with a fixed rate loan. Matching, smoothing and asset and liability management are all examples of internal hedging techniques. In other words, external contracts are not used specifically to manage interest rate risk. A forward rate agreement, or FRA, is an example of an external hedging technique. An FRA is separate from the loan, but acts as a top-up payment or receipt. Suppose it's the 1st of January. And as a result of doing our cash flow forecasting, we see we need a $5 million six-month loan in three months' time. Even if we were to fix the rate on that loan when we sign it in three months' time, we couldn't say now, on the 1st of January, what rate we'll get when we fix it. This is where we can use an FRA to help us. The bank offers us 
a $5 million 3 to 9 FRA at 5%. The 3 to 9 refers to the number of months until the loan starts from today and the number of months from today until the loan finishes. So a 3 to 9 FRA describes a 6 month loan due to start in 3 months time. This FRA is guaranteeing a base rate of 5% for the loan. When we sign the loan in 3 months time, suppose the base rate is 5.75%. When we sign the loan, we'll pay the base rate of 5.75% on the loan itself, but the FRA will pay us 0.75%. So overall we pay a net of 5% which was the base rate we agreed to in the FRA. The quid pro quo for this though is that if, suppose for example the base rate drops to 4% by the time we sign the loan agreement at the end of March, we'll pay a base rate of 4% on the loan itself but we'll have to pay an extra 1% under the FRA. Again this equates to a total payment of 4 plus 1 is 5%. In other words, in coordination with the actual loan we take out, the FRA is guaranteeing us an overall base rate of 5%. FRAs guarantee as a rate, but they're a binding obligation. If rates drop in the intervening period before we sign the loan, we're forced to pay under the FRA. Equally, if circumstances change and we actually don't need the loan, the FRA remains in place and will be obliged to pay if rates drop, albeit will have a receipt if they rise. It's worth noting that a saver or lender can also use an FRA that will pay them compensation if rates drop and they'll have to pay out under an FRA if rates rise. In other words, the net rate is protected. A saver is described as selling an FRA whereas a borrower is described as buying an FRA. Futures contracts can also be used to act as a counterbalance against movements in interest rates. They work on a similar principle to that explained in relation to foreign currency risk management. Following from our earlier example, a rate is agreed with the futures market when it's forecasted that we'll need to borrow in the future. So, if on the 1st of January we realise we'll need to borrow $5 million on the 1st of April, we can agree a rate for the loan that we'll sign on the 1st of April, on the 1st of January with the futures market. At that point, on the 1st of January, we'll need to pay a deposit to the exchange. If by the time we get to the 1st of April rates have risen, the futures market will compensate us for the increase in rate. If the rate drops, we'll need to make up the difference and make a payment to the futures market. In many ways, the outcome appears to be similar to that of an FRA. However, FRAs relate to a particular date when the loan will be signed. You get some date flexibility with futures. For example, a March future can be used on any day up to the end of March. However, futures are standardised contracts and relate to a fixed amount of borrowing for a fixed period of time. For example, one futures contract might relate to a $500,000 loan for three months. If we wanted to borrow a million dollars for six months, we'd need four futures to cover the amount of interest. We would need to double up for the amount and double for the term. Due to standard contract sizes, you may not be able to get an exact match for your needs. You may end up being over or under hedged. In addition, the deposit you need to pay up front may need to be topped up if it looks like losses are accruing in relation to your futures. The exchange will not take credit risk. In other words, if you run up losses, you need to pay them as you go. This presents a liquidity disadvantage, therefore. Cash outflows even before you sign the loan. Options operate very much like futures, except there's no downside other than a premium that needs to be paid at the start. As a result of paying the premium, if rates in general drop in the run-up to you taking out a loan, you get to keep the low loan rate and you won't have to pay out under the option. 
In similar circumstances, if you'd used a futures hedge, the low rate would effectively be taken away as you have to pay out losses under the futures arrangement. However, if rates rise, you pay out more for the loan you sign, but you receive compensation from the options market. This means you can benefit from a drop in rates if you're a borrower, but are protected from an increase in rates. However, the price you pay is a premium as the hedge is set up. A short note on terminology. A borrower would hedge potential borrowings using a put option or selling futures. A saver or lender can also use derivatives to hedge against interest rate movements. They'll be concerned about a fall in rates as this will reduce their income. They will hedge this position by buying futures or using a call option. In summary, internal hedging techniques can be used to mitigate interest rate risk, such as matching, smoothing and asset and liability management. External techniques can also be used, forward rate agreements and futures and options. Remember in your exam, futures and options are not examinable numerically.